بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأخلو العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Good evening We meet again How is everyone? I sincerely hope that you are fine Don't be upset that your SPM exam is going to be held in March next year. Look at the bright side. You have approximately 10 months to prepare. You have more time to read more books, do more exercises. Right now, what is very, very crucial is our safety, health and our life. This pandemic is affecting the entire world, not only our country. But we must be very thankful because our nation is handling this pandemic in a very, very much better way compared to other countries. Okay, so today I am going to revise with you, to teach you how to write a reflective composition. Okay, let's start. Tuition online, perlis mengaji. Reflective Composition In my previous lesson, I have introduced in Reflective Composition and today I'm going to teach you how to write a Reflective Composition. Remember, a Reflective Composition, probably you do not need specialized knowledge but you should be able to express your own thoughts, opinions and feelings on ordinary happenings in everyday life. You should show your depth of thought, well-organized ideas, and fresh and witty approach. You have to write at least four points, excluding the introduction and the conclusion. For every point, write a topic sentence. Okay, that is what is called. This is what we call a reflective composition. It is a personal recollection, beliefs, or viewpoints. But please focus on the topic. Do not jump to conclusion. Plan your composition. Do not get carried away by being emotional. Be sensible. Usually, when you are given uh, a topic for the reflective composition it is always something related to you something you know very well or something you think you know very well and this is where you sometimes jump to conclusion this is sometimes where you forget to plan your composition and you get carried away by being emotional by putting in things which are not related to the given topic that is why I say you have to be sensible all right, now, this is an example. Uh, you, it can be the title, My Ideal School. What are the features of an ideal school? Explain. Or the characteristics of an ideal school. All this will have more or less the same uh, content and the same way of answering it. So remember, you are going to talk about your ideal school. Maybe the school you have you that you go now is not up to your liking because of some um, uh, shortcomings here and there. So you wish to have a school which you think which is ideal for you. So let's see how you are going to do this composition. All right. The first thing you have to do is that you have to brainstorm ideas. What are the features you want to focus? You look at the word brainstorm, it means like there's a storm inside your brain, which means that you have to do this very, very quickly, right? Okay, so what are the features you want to focus? Maybe you want to talk about classrooms, maybe you want to talk about sports facilities. Uh, you do not have enough uh, goalposts, you do not, ena you do not, enough, uh, you do not have uh, enough uh, shuttlecocks uh, to play badminton. Your classrooms are too small. All right, next. Maybe you want to talk about more options for co-curricular activities. 
Well, you may want to have archery, swimming, all right? So the next one is that you want uh, your, the features that you want to, to, to include in your writing is that teachers. I mean, uh, you want to have more teachers, you want to have enough teachers for every subject, and then maybe you want to talk about ICT, computers, laptops, Wi-Fi, all those. And you may talk also about a big field. Maybe your school has a small field, and some schools, they don't even have a field. And maybe you want to talk about the food at the canteen. Not scrumptious enough? Okay. Too expensive? Okay. Uh, maybe you want to talk about toilets and changing rooms. The toilets are small, not enough. The changing rooms are pathetic. Okay. And then you want to have an air conditioner in your class. Maybe also you want to talk about flexible schooling hours. And you are going to request that you can use mobile phones. Really, no restrictions. Okay. Uh, you want to talk about no school uniforms, so you want to wear your baju kurung, okay? Uh, you have more freedom, uh, less rules and regulations. You are not going to be punished for uh, your uh, um, behavior, okay? So, and maybe you want to have, uh, you do not want to have any co-curricular activities. No games, no uniform units, no societies and clubs, okay? And you want to have lockers. So this is what we call brainstorming ideas and you may also add in awards and field trips. You want to have uh, award winning days, you want to have field trips more often. Well, uh, after uh, this pandemic is over, inshallah, we can have more field trips. So when you brainstorm ideas, it means that whatever comes to your mind within that two or three minutes, you're going to list them. Okay, don't bother about which one should come first, should come later. That is going to be done after this. But when you brainstorm ideas, you write whatever words, whatever ideas that come to your mind, that these words are related to the topic. Okay, all right, that is what we call brainstorm ideas. You may have more than what I have written here. These are only some of the examples. Remember, you are going to do this within a few minutes, not even five minutes, right? Okay, and... So, what's next? Okay, now, once you have all those words that, uh, from your brainstorm session, you are going to choose the best four main ideas that you can elaborate easily, right? You're going to choose four main ideas, okay? Decide what to mention and what to avoid. When I say what to avoid, I mean sensitive issues like race and religion. Do not belittle uh, anybody's uh, way of life. Uh, according to their beliefs, do not uh, mention uh, something degrading about some other people's uh, race. So that is what I mean by what to avoid. What to mention means all the good things that you want to highlight, what will enhance your composition. Think of ideas based on moral values, the situation in our country, and use the condition in your school as a guide. What do you want to change? Why? What is that that you find that uh, it should not be there? Uh, what are the things you think should be there, but they are not there? So use that as a guide for you to write about your ideal school. Okay, done with the brainstorming, and then you choose the four main ideas. Okay, now you are going to put the four headings or the four main ideas, the features. The first one would be the environment. Then the second one would be teachers, okay? And then you want to talk about rules and regulations, okay? And number four, you want to uh, focus on parent-teacher-student communication. So there are four headings that you have decided from the brainstorming session. Okay, now, you are now going to use some of the words or add in other words from your brainstorming session for you to write about environment. So look at this, environment. Maybe you want to talk about uh, classroom facilities, lockers, ICT, air conditioner. So you're going to talk about all this uh, under the heading environment. When you want to talk about teachers, you want to write about teachers, you bring in about they are being knowledgeable, up to date, helpful, no-nonsense, they advise you, they are caring, okay? 
The third heading, rules and regulations. This is where you want to put in your own up, discipline, award, merit, winning competitions, appreciate. All those things will come, all those things will come under rules and regulations. And the last one would be parent teacher student communication. This is where you want to have the word understanding, help, train, polish, success, bond. Okay. Now you have a frame, you have a, a skeleton, okay, you have a plan for your reflective composition, my ideal school, or the characteristics of an ideal school. Now Write your composition. Focus. You have less than an hour. Why? Because you have taken some time, okay, a few minutes to do the brainstorming, another few minutes to set out the headings, okay, the four headings. So now you have less than one hour to write your composition. And remember, you have also to allocate at least two minutes for you to revise your composition later. Okay, now let's see. This is the introduction. The introduction uses a quotation. If you uh, attended my last class, my previous class, uh, I have shown you uh, 10 ways how to start your composition. So this is a composition which uses a quotation to introduce the topic. Education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school, Albert Einstein. The quote is very true as the school is not only an institution where we acquire knowledge, it is also a place where we learn how to get along with others regardless of creed and colour, differentiate between right and wrong and live within a community with different background. It is the best place to develop our IQ, that is intelligence quotient, and EQ, emotional quotient, in order to become well-rounded people. All right. Notice that education is, school is, it is, okay, singular subject, singular verb, subject, verb agreement. To get, differentiate, leave, all comes together for the rule of after two, only root, word. Okay, so this is uh, an introduction using quotation. Okay, it is related to school, all right. Of course, education has something to do with school. All right, now, point number one. The main idea is environment. So, look at uh, this uh, paragraph. Look for the topic sentence. First and foremost, my ideal school would have an environment that is conducive for teaching and learning. The classrooms would be air-conditioned, especially in our hot climate. Each classroom is also equipped with state-of-the-art facilities such as an electronic whiteboard and a huge screen with a projector. This will save time, as in most schools, students have to walk to the computer room. Moreover, they have to take turns to use the room and sometimes only get to go there once a month. Students will have their own lockers and they do not have to lock around heavy bags anymore. Definitely, there will be less incidence of students leaving their books at home. Right. So, the main idea is environment. Where is the topic sentence? What is the topic sentence? Okay. Right. The topic sentence is when you say that my idol, the first and foremost, my idol school would have an environment that is conducive for teaching and learning. So you're going to focus on conducive for teaching and learning. That is why you. Uh, explain about classrooms, okay, what are the things that are supposed to be in the classroom, all right? And uh, to make it uh, conducive for teaching and learning, you would want to have a computer room where students get to go there more often, all right? And then you also mentioned about having lockers so that you can leave some of your heavy books there, okay? So this is where you focus on the environment, and you focus on the classrooms, what should be there, and you want the computer room, and also you want to have lockers. All right? You will notice there would have, will have, okay, uh, of the same colors because these are all under model verbs. After model verbs, you uh, after the model verbs, you only you can only put 
words with uh, the root words. You cannot put words with any S or past tense. All right? Would have. Each classroom is. The word each means one. Always singular. So each classroom is. Every classroom is. Okay, so you have to remember. Each, every, each, everyone, someone, everyone, no one, nobody. All right? Or singular. All right? Okay. Okay, again, the rule of to walk, to take, to use, to go, to lock. Okay, after two, only root words. Okay, so point number one is the environment. The main idea is environment. The topic sentence is environment that is conducive for teaching and learning. Okay, now let's go to point number two. Point number two, teachers. In addition, my ideal school must have passionate teachers who are knowledgeable and have the ability to teach the students effectively. They know how to impart knowledge in such a way that students with various levels of intelligence can understand. They will constantly improve themselves and find new ways to make their lessons fun. It is heartwarming to see teachers using a plethora of techniques and gadgets to deliver their lessons. Most of all, these teachers always realize they do not just teach a subject, but they are teaching about life itself. They advise, guide, train, and when necessary, reprimand or even punish students with the noble intention of making them better in various aspects. Therefore, they are, they are always helping students to be independent and to prepare for life after school. What is the topic sentence here? Yes, the, the, uh, my idol school must have passionate teachers who are knowledgeable and have the ability to teach the students effectively. So you elaborate from the knowledgeable and the ability to teach the students effectively. These two qualities, so that is why you say that they know how to impart knowledge uh, to various levels of, uh, to students with various levels of intelligence and everybody could understand. All right, they will constantly improve. Okay, must have, can understand, will constantly, model verbs. Huh? All right, uh, improve themselves and find new ways to make their lessons fun. Okay, all right. Uh, you notice the sentence, they advise, guide, train. Okay, advise, A-D-V-I-S-E. This is the verb. Okay, do not confuse with A-D-V-I-C-E. That's a noun. Right. This is the advice. The word advice here is the verb where you can put advices for she, advice to show past tense, advising to show continuous tense. But the word advice, A-D-V-I-C-E, is the one that you cannot put as, but you can say pieces of advice, the noun. All right. This is the verb. All right. So do not uh, confuse the spelling of A-D-V-I-S-E and D-V-I-C-E. All right. So point number two, the main idea in number two is about teachers. Okay, passionate teachers who are knowledgeable and have the ability to teach students effectively. All right, two points. Now let's go to point number three. Point number three: rules and regulations. Every school needs rules and regulations. This is to maintain discipline and harmony. My ideal school encourages students to be responsible for their own actions. Admit your mistakes. Never blame someone else when you're wrong. Hence, a merit system is considered fair. Each student is given 100 points to start off. Every misdemeanor will get a demerit point and every good deed is given a merit point. Each win for a club or in any competition will also earn the student a point. At the end of the term, students with high points will be awarded. A simple yet memorable ceremony to acknowledge students who are obedient, diligent and kind is a great idea. This gives a chance for students who might not excel academically but well-mannered to feel appreciated. Can you see the topic sentence in this uh, main idea rules and relation? Yes, it is not the first sentence. It is the second one. This is to maintain discipline and harmony. That is the function of the rules and regulations that you want to uh, explain, that you want to elaborate in this point. Okay? Every misdemeanor, singular. Each student is singular. Each win okay, uh, will also earn. Uh, model verbs huh? will get. Uh, okay. All right. 
this is where you talk about rules and regulations, but in a very uh, respected manner. You do not condemn anybody. You do not criticize anybody about rules and regulations, but you are making a fresh approach of what should uh, what do you want to be about rules and regulations in your ideal school? Okay, three points. Okay, now let's go to point number four. Point number four, the main idea is parent teacher student communication. Apart from that, there would be constant and meaningful parent teacher student communication. Parents are encouraged to participate in the teaching and learning process. They are invited to the classrooms as teaching assistants or to join school trips and they can witness how the teachers go all out to mold their children. This will create a significant bond between parents and the school. Parents with special talents can help to polish the students to res in respected fields. It would be wonderful to have a music conductor who is the father of a student to train the school orchestra. Professionals will also be invited to give talks and motivate the students towards academic excellence. They are the living proofs of how to achieve success. So parent-teacher student communication, the topic sentence is there will be constant and meaningful parent-teacher student communication. Right, where parents come to school, see the teachers, discuss with the teachers, uh, go and meet uh, the teachers uh, to uh, say thank you, to congratulate them, okay? And teachers invite parents to come and join uh, the activities at school. So this is what uh, the main idea of point number four, parent, teacher, student communication. So there are all four points together, four paragraphs of uh, points, one paragraph of the introduction and you come to the conclusion to the last paragraph where you express the implication of the topic to the future this is uh, when you start by saying that beyond academic growth my ideal school would be incomplete if there is no emphasis on social and emotional growth as well the school would address these issues and strive to create an emotionally and physically safe environment to support spiritual and intellectual growth as this is where true learning comes full circle. Thus, my idol school focuses on molding wholesome students and giving them the chance to grow. This text is adapted and edited from Teaching and Learning Module SPM English Vocabulary and Writing. Okay, so there are six paragraphs all together. Paragraph number one is the introduction. Paragraph number six is the conclusion. There are four paragraphs in the middle. Okay, in between them, uh, those are the four points of how you want to talk about your ideal school. You may have other points, you may have I other ideas, but this is one example of how to write about your ideal school. But if you want to write, the question says characteristics of an ideal school. <coughs> Right, so uh, you notice that the conclusion expressed the implication of the topic to the future. Okay, all right. Now, reminders. Do not use slang in your composition. Slang is a type of language consisting of words and phrases that are regarded as very informal are more common in speech than writing and are typically restricted to a particular context or group of people. For example, the word grass is slang for marijuana. Okay, and please do not use this wana, wacha, guana, and kinda, okay? You must use one, two, what are you going to kind of. That, those are the four examples that I've given you just now. Those are slang. Do not use that in your composition when you want to write in your exam. Okay? All right. Slang is not the way one speaks. That is accent. Okay? A distinctive way of pronouncing a language, especially one associated with a particular country, area, or social class. Like you say, someone speaks with a strong British accent. So today, get uh, these two uh, terms correctly, okay? Which one is slang, which one is accent, okay? 
the next reminder. Use punctuation correctly. When you write, you have to use punctuation correctly. Why? Punctuation changes meaning. I'm going to show you what I mean by saying punctuation changes meaning. All right, look at this. It's shoots and leaves. What can you understand from this? It's, comma, shoots and leaves. Okay. It means that there is someone or something who comes to someone's house, someone's place, eats whatever is being given there, shoots the host and leaves. Scary. Okay? But, it's shoots and leaves. So this is explaining about something. A panda. It's shoots and leaves. So do not put the comma just anywhere that you want it to be because it changes meaning. Punctuation changes meaning. Is everything all right? No help needed with a smile there. No help needed. Okay. No help needed. There's an exclamation mark there to show how happy they are. No, no help needed. We are fine. We are okay. Right? But the other one, no, who stop? Help needed. So punctuation changes meaning. That is why it is very important to you to use correct punctuation in your composition. Punctuation saves lives. Yes, punctuation saves lives. I'll show you uh, why uh, punctuation, how can punctuation save lives. Let's eat grandma. What are you, a cannibal? You want to eat your grandma? Let's eat grandma. Now, you are being that sweet granddaughter or grandson, okay, inviting your grandma to eat. Let's eat, grandma. Okay. L E T apostrophe S. After the word eat, you put a comma. After the word, the word grandma, you put a, uh, an exclamation mark. Okay. And then you have the open inverted comma and close inverted comma. Punctuation saves lives. All right. Punctuation, the marks used to separate letters, words, and sentences. Use question marks at the ends of asking sentences. That a question mark there. Use apostrophes to show possession. Use exclamation points at the ends of telling sentences to show surprise or excitement. Use commas to separate words in the list after introductory words and indexed addresses and quotations. Right. Use quotation marks to show what someone is saying. Use periods, or you, you call it full stop, at the ends of telling sentences and in abbreviations. Okay. I think we should take a break for a second. That's what a comma says. I think we should stop altogether, says the period or the full stop. I agree, says the exclamation mark. What are you guys talking about? That's the question mark asking a question. So these are the four main punctuation marks that you must remember and use them correctly. The following 10 examples are from the website given there, www.goodhousekeeping.com. All right, credit goes to Caroline Picard, the health editor. So you are going to see the how punctuation should be used correctly. The news, however, came as a shock. You should add commas there, all right? Omitting commas for non-essential elements. Anything that modifies a sentence without changing its meaning, whether it's a word, phrase, or clause, should go in between a pair of commas. For example, the however in this sentence adds contrast, not clarification. So the news, comma, however, comma, came as a shock. Okay, next. The text that she sent had lots of emojis. Setting off essential information with commas. Likewise, any other, any info pertaining to the sentence meaning should not get commas. 
helpful hint. The word that always signals essential elements while the word which indicates inessential elements. So ditch the commas there. The text that she sent had lots of emojis. Okay? Next. I love stranger things. It's the best. Break this up. Splicing the comma. Comma splices occur when a comma separates two independent clauses. If each part could stand on its own as a complete sentence, you need to break them up. Add a coordinating conjunction like and or but or use a period or semicolon instead. I love Stranger Things, comma, it's the best. Right? Pass the rolls. I'm really hungry. Change the colon to a full stop, to a period. Joining sentences with a colon. Semicolons usually join related independent clauses, while colons often introduce a list of or quotation. A period can split up two separate statements as well. Pastor Rose, I'm really hungry. Right. Now, her favorite colors are purple, blue and green. Delete the colon. Putting a colon after a fragment. Most people know to put a colon before a list, but that's not always the case. If the preceding part sounds like an incomplete sentence on its own, skip it. So her favourite colours are purple, blue and green. She said, comma, open inverted comma, what time is it? Close inverted comma, question mark. Swap them, change them. All right, putting sentence ending punctuations outside of quotes. This one's easy peasy. Periods, question marks, and exclamation points all go before the closing quotation mark. So, what time is it? Put the question mark first and then put the close inverted comma. It's time to leave. Add an apostrophe after the letter T before the letter S. This is the trouble of mixing up its IT apostrophe S and its ITS. Remember, its ITS is possessive. IT apostrophe S, its replaces it is. Got it? All right? So its, okay, IT apostrophe S, okay, uh, is to replace it is. ITS is the possessive. The dog wags its tail. That's the ITS. Okay, so it's time to leave IT apostrophe S. Okay, it is time to leave. All right. This book is yours. Cut the apostrophe. Adding extra apostrophes. Personal pronouns like hers, his, it's yours, ours, and theirs already indicate the possessive, so don't need. So they don't need any punctuation indicating the fact. A pro tip here: whose w h o s e implies ownership, while whose w h o apostrophe s stands for who is or who has. So this book is yours. Do not put the apostrophe after the R before the S. It is the same when you write your letter, yours faithfully, Y-O-U-R-S. Do not put the apostrophe there in between the R and the S. The 35-year-old woman just celebrated her birthday. Add hyphens here after 35 before the year and after the year before old. Not hyphenating words serving as a single adjective. In this case, the entire phrase 35 year old describes the word woman. On the flip side, compound modifiers that go after a noun, example, the woman is 35 years old, don't get hyphens. So 35 year old woman, put hyphens there after 35, after year. All right, my three-year-old sister. All right, okay. So, add hyphens, okay, because 
uh, the entire phrase 35 year old describes the word woman. So that is why you have to put hyphens there. I wake up at 7 a.m. every day. Make it A, full stop, M, full stop. The two dots there. You want to call it full stop, you want to call it dot, whatever, but you have to put that. Using AM and PM. While some style guides skip the abbreviating periods, AM and PM respectively stand for the Latin phrases anti meridium before midday and post meridium after midday, publications that follow AP style always write them in lowercase 2, right? So I wake up at 7 a.m. a dot m dot every day. Okay? Alright. That's the end for today's lesson. But remember, this is someone that's something I would like to share with you. Thank you, Frontliners. This is from Sim W Property. The next one is thank you, Frontliners. This is from Roja Daily. This is another one. Thank you so much, heroes. Stay at home. Coronavirus. Kita jaga kita. Cegah bersama. Flatten the curve. Duduk rumah. COVID-19. Stay home. Stay safe. This is from Frontliners Instagram. And this one. This is from Majlis Keselamatan Negara. Let me remind you that the war on COVID-19 is not yet over. The fight is still on. We are doing well so far, so just uplift your spirits and continue to fight. If we persevere, inshallah, we will win. Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin, Prime Minister. Please stay at home. Be safe, MCO. That's all. Thank you. See you again. Assalamualaikum. <laughs>